Um, but while I go off and faff, you have got a lot to do here. So the first thing I want you to do is, some of you are not going to like doing this because it might make you feel uncomfortable because you might not know what to do. Can you sketch a helicopter? The, the point is really that I want you to have to really think about how much you know about helicopters. Like what bits go where, where, where are the twirly bits? How many twirly bits are there? At what angle are the twirly bits? Um, and then I'm hoping that if you sketch a helicopter now and then sketch a helicopter at the end of the lesson, that'll be a nice way of seeing that you've learned something because the final sketch will hopefully be better. Unless you're some sort of massive helicopter expert, which I kind of hope you're not because, you know, I'm about to teach you about helicopters. Uh, the next question is simple. Do helicopters have propellers or rotors? What is the difference? Some of you knew this on Facebook yesterday, and some people like me did not have a clue. Uh, and then the really tough question. This is this is um, a past GCSE physics question that really sort of got everyone's go. Everyone got really cross about it. Um, so what do you reckon to this? For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That is true. When a boat's propeller pushes on water, the water pushes back on the boat. That is true. So aren't the forces on the boat balanced, right? We saw in the first lesson how if the forces on something are balanced, it stays still. So wouldn't the boat stay still because the forces on it are balanced? OK, I'm going to leave you with those tasks while I just run off and faff monstrously in the background, OK? But yeah, I'll be, I'll be back in, I don't, I don't know, three or four minutes, enough for you to get all that done. Ah, 
Right, I have got my bits. Have you done all your jobs? Oh, good, even more people have come. Should we get started? Well, I'll just double check. A4 paper, yes. Card, cereal box, yes. Scissors, sellotape. God, you don't need much, do you, to make this fantastic? Well, here it is. I'm to show you this one. Okay, I'm gonna flip her you round. Let's go. Ah, hello, Science Alliance. Oh, wait, I need my box. Right, Science Alliance, it is lesson three of our series of lessons on flight. And we've done uh, weight and how weight is a force that is pulling everything and everyone down. If you are made of particles, then weight is a force that is pulling you down. Uh, we've looked at hot air balloons and why things float and sink. And we're doing helicopters. We're gonna make a helicopter. A helicopter that hopefully will actually go up into the sky. Like maybe just a tiny bit, but it should get, it should go up into the sky. Um, yeah, let's start making it and then I'll talk you through, first of all, that really tricky, like past physics GCSE question. So you need, cereal box card is the perfect thickness for this, I think. You need to cut, first of all, a, what is it? Is it propeller? Is it a rotor? I will tell you. But you need to cut a piece of cardboard that's as straight as you can. Um, it's about, if you stretch out your thumb and your finger, it's like just a little bit shorter than that. Go bigger, because you can always cut it down. I spent a really embarrassing amount of time in this lesson on Facebook the other day trying to just cut a piece of card that was straight and the right size. So I'm gonna go bigger and then not worry about it too much. Um, what are we cutting out? It's a, it's a rotor, did you know that? Helicopters do not have propellers, they have rotors. In fact, if you're ever not sure, rotor is, you can always say rotor. A rotor is basically just any kind of blade that turns around. <laughs> so, what happened to my cereal box? I got it from the recycling. Yeah, any kind of blade that turns around is a rotor, but if it's propelling something forwards, then it's a propeller. So, um, obviously on a helicopter, the rotor is going around um, to lift the helicopter into the air. So that's not propelling it forwards. Whereas on an airship, which we're learning about in our Lego story time later on, um, they do have propellers, rotors that are on their side to propel the airship forwards. Right, so that's, that's your first lesson. It's a, it's a rotor. Uh, again, I could just faff around with this bit all day. And cut it a little shorter. Right, anyway, you, you concentrate on making <laughs> a bit. I would just do this until it turned into nothing. Concentrate on making just a straight piece of card that is about that size, about postcard width. And I'll talk you through this rock solid uh, GCSE question. And it'll be a good bit of revision for what we learned about the other day for people who maybe weren't here. Right, Isaac Newton said, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And, and that is completely true. Uh, when he said action, he meant like a push or a pull. He meant a force, which we have been talking about in previous lessons. So, for example, when you push on a wall, the wall pushes back. We learned last week. This is weird, but true. So if, if you push on a wall, the wall pushes back. If when you pushed on a wall, the wall did not push back, you would fall through the wall. It would not be good. So, yeah, this is weird, but true. For every force, there's an equal and opposite force, an equal force in the opposite direction. But in the first lesson, we learned that if something is still, the forces on it are balanced, right? So here's your thing, whatever it is, just a ball, your something. Um, and we draw arrows on it to show the forces that are acting on it, okay? So uh, the length of the arrows, the, the longer the arrow, the bigger the forces. So this would be a force diagram for something that was getting pushed in that direction and pushed with the same amount of force in the opposite direction. Like last week, um, we looked at like a pen, didn't we, in the first lesson? If you get a pen and you push it really hard on both sides, then the forces on it are balanced, right? You're pushing, but in opposite directions with an equal amount of force, so it's not moving. So we looked at, if something is still like this, the forces on it must be balanced. Like maybe, maybe there isn't any pushing force that would still be balanced, right? Okay, moving on. So if this thing was still just sitting on the table and you applied the forces shown, it would not move. So if you jump, Come on, let's do it. Maybe you're watching on catch up, but for me, it's uh, it's nine o'clock in the morning. Just got my kids to school. I need some exercise. So when you, you jump up in the air, like this, what's happening? Well, obviously you weigh the same the whole time, but weight is just like the gravity of earth pulling on your body. So your weight doesn't change, right? This This downwards force is always the same. You, there's your weight. 
Um, so what's happened to the upwards force? <clears throat> well, you've, you've gone into the air, you've changed from standing still to going into the air. So there must be more force pushing up on you. And what that force is, is you're pushing down harder on the floor, right? When you jump, you push down really hard on the floor. So the floor pushes harder up on you. Like this. Oh. So this would be a force diagram for you just starting to move into the air, okay? You have got a weight, but the upwards force is more. So you fly. Lesson seven, we're going to see how basically rockets just use a massive explosion underneath them to create this really big push. So let's have a look at this boat. A boat is still, right? It's just completely still. And then you turn on the propeller, imagine. So the propeller, this little thing here, this rotor on its side, the propeller pushes on the water and the water pushes back on the propeller with an equal and opposite force. So aren't the forces on the boat balanced? So how does it move? This really perplexed everyone a few years ago when I was classroom teaching in a GCSE paper. Before I answer it, let's start making the other bit of your helicopter because hopefully you've cut out your little rotor now. You need an A4 piece of paper. I'm gonna recycle this Pudsey Bear colouring sheet that didn't get used. I'm sorry, Pudsey, next year, mate. Um, you have to roll a piece of A4 paper along the longest edge into as tight a tube as you can get. If you look at this activity on YouTube, they usually use a plastic straw and a glue gun, but we're gonna try and be a bit more environmentally friendly. So make, make something that is about the width of a plastic straw, but make it out of this piece of paper. Um, you might want an adult to help you. I'm licking my fingers because I need to, you need to get the inside like really tight, if you know what I mean. You want to make sure that as much of the paper is touching each other as possible. So it's very difficult to do. It's especially difficult to do on a whiteboard. I'm also feeling really bad for Pudsey. <laughs> oh. There we go, I'll do it on the table. So this propeller, a lot of people on Facebook yesterday were saying, oh well, obviously the, um, the water pushes on the boat more. It must have a more powerful force. But it's like, no, it can't be that, can it? Because it's an equal and opposite force. If you push on a wall with a force of five newtons, the wall pushes back with a force of five newtons. So it's not that. What's happening? Oh, Pudsey, work with me, dude. Come down here while I flap on with Pudsey. So when you're drawing a force diagram, which actually, however old you are, you do need to need to learn how to do this according to you know the school, government boards. I know. Um, when you're drawing a force diagram, you're only drawing the forces that that one thing is feeling. So if you're drawing a force diagram for the forces that are acting on a boat, just think about what the boat is feeling. What are the forces acting on a boat? Well, the boat is getting pushed uh, by the water. The water is pushing on the boat, so we draw an arrow like that. And then that's it, isn't it? I mean, the water is getting pushed, but we don't care about that. We're only drawing the forces that are acting on the boat. So you could draw another force diagram if you wanted showing that water was getting pushed, but that's just not necessary here. Um, so the forces on the boat are not balanced, in fact, so it does start to move. Now, you're all at different levels, so I, I need to add that there, there is another force acting in that direction, which is like you might have heard of sort of friction or, you know, resistance from the water. We're not going to worry too much about that today. We will get to it in other lessons. Um, but but yeah, it's, it's not as big as the force from the water pushing on the boat. That's good, isn't it? So we've solved that mystery. Right, so when drawing a force diagram, only draw the forces that are pushing or pulling on the thing. How are you getting on with your straw? It's tough, this, isn't it? So, so hopefully you've got a really long, quite hard bit of paper. You need to tape that together. I'm going to use this Christmas... What do you say? Is it washi tape? The tape that's like paper. Because um, this tape's not very good. Don't ever get shiny washi tape. But it's it's going to make my uh, my helicopter look Christmassy. If you're watching on catch up, it is late December. Which is good enough for me. Okay. Oh, that looks nice. Right. So, yeah, get a bit of tape along your paper uh, to make it into one firm straw. Sorry about this. It's not great for the environment, is it? Obviously, if you want to recycle this, you'll have to take the tape off and recycle the paper and the tape separately. But it's it's better than the glue gun plastic straw monstrosities that I was looking at on the internet. Right, there we go. So how a helicopter flies, I'm going to give you a question sheet now because I've been talking a lot. Um, how a helicopter... <laughs> I'm just looking... If there's any personal information here, if there's not, I've just 
got to book the dentist <laughs> if you can read that on my whiteboard. How a helicopter works is helicopter's got a bigger rotor and there's obviously air particles underneath the rotor and we have got a whole lesson coming up about how aeroplane wings work so we're not going to talk about how it happens but what happens is as the helicopter rotor goes round it pushes down on the air and the air pushes back up again right so the helicopter is pushing down on the air it's because the helicopter wings are at an angle and so the air particles push back on the helicopter so the more the more the helicopter pushes down on the air or the more air the helicopter can push down on the more air pushes up and the more the helicopter goes into the sky it's all right the bigger the upwards force so while you're finishing off your paper straw and you've got your little cardboard rotor that we'll need to put the helicopter together in a bit can you answer these questions for me? No one, absolutely no one, not even the people who are quite experienced and old, got all of these questions right on Facebook the other day. You're going to have to read the question really carefully and also just prepare to be wrong. I mean, I would be pleased. I would think that I'd done my job well if you got some of these questions wrong because it means that I've, uh, I've managed to make them challenging. Here we go. So the question is, which of these would affect how much air pushed up on the helicopter, right? So imagine you've got a helicopter's wing, business card here for demo, helicopter's wing, you've got air underneath the helicopter's wing and it's that air that pushes up on the wing, not the, you know, I mean the rotor, that makes it go up. So which one of these things is going to affect how much air pushed up on the helicopter? If the air was warm, would that mean that there was more lift? That means like more upwards force. Or would there be less upwards force or would there be no difference? If the air was cold, would there be more, more air pushing up on the helicopter's rotor or less air or would there be no difference? If the helicopter was really high up, um, if you've just watched my weather lessons, that might help you with this. What happens to air, do you know, when you get really, really high up in the sky? Does it get thinner? Does it get thicker? Are there more particles? Are there less particles? So would there be more air pushing up or less air or would it just be the same? If the rotor span really fast, would that make more particles push up on it or less or no difference? If strong winds blew towards the helicopter, uh, I think everyone got this one and I didn't know it before I researched helicopters. Uh, would there be more lift or less or no difference? If the helicopter was heavier, be careful here. If the helicopter's weight was more, would there be more air particles pushing up on it or less or no difference? And if the blades were thinner, what, what difference would that make? I'll give you the answer to the first one so you can check if you're on the right track. Um, in our uh, in our hot air balloon lesson, in fact, which was just last week, if you saw that one, we talked about how when air gets warm, the particles get more energy and they spread out, right? So if this was the air underneath the helicopter's wing, sorry, people who were halfway through the questions will be really annoyed. I'll put you back in just a sec. Uh, if this is cold air, particles are closer together. If that air gets warm, and the particles spread out. So if the particles are more spread out, there's fewer particles pushing up on the wing, right? It's just, there's just less air particles underneath the blade. I keep saying wing, you know what I mean. Um, so the answer to the first one was if the air was warm, there would be less lift. There would be fewer air particles pushing up on the helicopter's rotor. So less force.
I'll give you, I'll give you 20 more seconds because I'm sure you've got one wrong. Everyone got at least one wrong. These ones, if I may use my new Christmas pointing stick, these ones were causing a lot of problems. The strong winds and the weight of the helicopter. All right, let's go through them. Well, if the air was warm, the particles would be more spread out, so there'd be fewer particles pushing up on the rotor. So if the air was cold, it'd be the opposite, right? The particles are closer together. So you've got more air particles under the blades, so there is more lift, more force pushing outwards. Uh, if the helicopter was really high up, Air gets thinner as you get higher up. There's just less air really, really high up in the sky. Uh, and obviously no air once you get to space. So again, yeah, there would be less lift. This is, a, this is a true thing that helicopters, apparently pilots really have to think about. I read a story about someone who, uh, a helicopter pilot who'd been paid to take someone to like a, a cabin high up in the forest, high up on a mountain. But the person who was going to the cabin had got the measurements wrong, that like had read the map in feet instead of metres, and the cabin was much higher than they thought. And the helicopter pilot got into loads of trouble because they, uh, they just hadn't accounted for flying up that high and they couldn't get enough force. So when you hear helicopters saying, oh, like, we couldn't land because, you know, the weather was bad or whatever, maybe that's one of the reasons. Too warm or too cold. Uh, if the rotor was spanned faster, well, that would, right, every time it spins, it pushes down on air particles. So if it's spinning faster, then it's pushing down on more air particles. So that would be more lift. If strong winds blew towards the helicopter, well, it's almost the same as the, you've still got more air particles, right? So the rotors are spinning, I'm loving my new little pointy stick. Air particles blowing in would put more air under the helicopter's rotors. So that one, there's more lift as well. If the helicopter was heavier, did you get, there would be no difference, but you really had to read the question. Um, if Obviously, if the helicopter was heavier, if the helicopter weighed more, you would need more lift to get it into the air. You would have to find a way to push down on more air particles, but the weight of the helicopter doesn't affect how much air is pushing up on the helicopter, okay? Uh, and if the blades were thinner, again, it'd be pushed down, pushing down on fewer air particles. So there would be less lift in that situation as well. I'm going to move the screen away now. So if you haven't had a chance to scribble down the answers, then don't forget uh, this is our catch up. So you'll be fine. You can always come back to it. OK, let's finish our helicopter and then take it for a little spin. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? So you need to get a bit of sellotape and put it around the middle of your rotor and then just put it on top of your new paper straw thing and just sort of tape it all around the outside so it's got to be quite a long bit of sellotape you're looking for this effect this kind of Mary Poppins hat style look that this sellotape is doing on either side of the rotor you get that so cut a long bit of tape I'm going to use my absolutely useless but very attractive Christmas washi tape again <clears throat> a really long piece stick it right in the middle of your rotor and then yeah don't don't tuck it in too much it's actually more stable if you don't here we go so i'll put that across like that but straight there we go put it on top of the straw my straw's actually gone a little bit pointy today so i'm just going to chop the top off the straw so i've got a nice flat surface there you go yeah and then that's better isn't it now you've got a nice flat piece of straw Stick the rotor on top and just curve it round on either side. If you've got another person in the room, get them to help you. Well, what are they there for, you know? There we go. See what I mean? Like little Mary Poppins hat. <laughs> so there we go. Works best if the rotor's in the middle, obviously. And then just, just kind of squish down on the tape. 
to try and get that little hat to stay on your straw. That'll do. Right, so my question to you while you're finishing off is, uh, will this helicopter fly? If we spin it really fast, is this helicopter gonna actually move up into the air? Because I'm excited about this. I've never made this before. You can do, it's like a really kind of, if you're a physics teacher, you do this all the time, where you cut a little piece of paper up to make a helicopter shape, you put paper clips on the bottom and then it falls and it spins, that's nice. But this is better, I think, because this one isn't just gonna fall and spin. It's actually gonna behave like a helicopter when we spin it. It's gonna go up into the air, but actually this one is not. Why not? Why is this helicopter not going to fly? The answer? Well, there's a difference. Look, this is the one that I made first. You can very clearly see the difference. Uh, the, the blades are at an angle on my one that I made earlier that I know works. This helicopter is not going anywhere because the blades aren't pushing down on the air. They're just kind of slicing through the air. So we need to bend the blades. So you need to bend, like if you're holding it, bend one side, say the top up and the bottom down. You get me? So they're kind of symmetrically, like rotational, sim just bend up on one side, down on the other side, yeah? <laughs> there we go. There is a time, I'll just chat to you while you're doing this. There is a time when you would want a helicopter's blades to spin round and not push down on any air. Can you think of when that would be? I discovered this while I was researching. I thought it would really perplex you all. And everyone on Facebook was like, oh yeah, obviously this time. <laughs> when would you want a helicopter's blades to spin around, but for it to not push down on any air? So you see what I've done. I've pushed one side, like the bottom bit up, and then on the other side, I've pushed the top bit up. Are you shouting at me when it's landing? Yeah, when it's landing, that's right. There's a control inside the helicopter that the pilot operates that changes the angle of the rotor. So when it's coming into land, eventually the blades are completely flat so that it's, as it spins, it's landing. I know, it's good, isn't it? So there's no downwards force. Right. I think we might be time, it might be time to fly. I hope my washi tape is up to the job. So the other thing you're gonna to have to do is, you might have noticed, I've cut my straw quite a bit shorter on the one that I made earlier. I actually, there's a perfect, there's a perfect weight. It's got to weigh quite a lot so that it, it pulls down a bit and balances the helicopter. But obviously uh, if you make it, so if, yeah, if you make it too short, it won't be stable. But if you make it too long, it'll weigh too much. So the idea is, I'm gonna be a bit gross and lick my hands. Um, you lick your hands and you spin it between your hands and then you have to pull away really quickly and so that you're not kind of trapping it and hopefully it will lift into the air. But yeah, you're gonna need to trim the straw off but trim it in little bits. Trim it a little bit and then see if it flies and trim it a bit more and see if it flies and keep going like that. You can just about see <laughs> I, uh, I cut too much off my helicopter so then I had to stick a little nub back on again. So do it slowly in stages but I'll show you what's, what's supposed to happen. Gross little hand lick, bit of friction. Yeah, so twist it so that the, the bit that's upwards is going into the air, right? Spin it as fast as you can, pull your hands away as quickly as you can, and you should see a little bit of lift. Let's do it, let's do this. Whoa, wow, look what happened. It landed in my glass. Oh, man, I wish I'd been filming that. I'm gonna try again. Ah, oh, this is, I don't, I don't know about you. Mine is highly successful and a lot of fun. I could literally just spend the rest of the lesson doing this at you, but it's not good telly. But I'm gonna do it again. Definitely some lift there. I mean, you might think that I'm chucking it up into the air. That's why you'll have to do it yourself to make sure that I'm not. I'm just spinning and pulling down. Yeah, pretty good. So what we've just made here, um, the idea for this came, obviously, from China 2,000 years ago. They were making these bamboo helicopters. Um, so um, China didn't actually invent the helicopter as we know it. But we think that um, this might have given the people who did invent the helicopter the idea. So yeah, 2,000 years ago, they just had these little toy helicopters made from bamboo. That One of my favourite things I've ever showed you on Theory of Science is this French painting from the 1400s of uh, the Virgin Mary and little baby Jesus and some other religious thing, I don't know who it is. But look what baby Jesus is holding. French painting from the 1400s showing Mary and baby Jesus. Jesus has a toy helicopter. Is that the cutest thing you've ever seen? I'm crying, it's so adorable. Ugh. Right, now obviously, what does this prove? 
<laughs> um, it doesn't prove that little baby Jesus had a toy helicopter. This is the 1400s. But what it does prove is that in Europe, in the 1400s, they knew of toy helicopters. So they had made their way, honestly, oh, little baby Jesus with his little toy. <laughs> Someone suggested on Facebook it might have been brought by the three wise men. Um, but anyway, yeah, came over from China and uh, definitely arrived in Europe at some point in like the medieval times. Okay, um, hopefully you've done that and you're having a little bit of fun while you're playing with your helicopter. When you sketched your helicopter, did you draw a rotor on the tail? I don't think that I would have done this. And if you did draw a rotor on your helicopter sketch's tail, what direction was it pointed in? And my questions to you are, why do helicopters have a rotor on the tail? Why is it there? Why do helicopters have a rotor on the tail? If you didn't sketch it in your first sketch, good, I'm pleased. That means that I'm now teaching you something. A lot of you probably did. If you did, what angle is it at? So um, a lot of people were saying on Facebook, oh, it's to, it's to like keep the tail up in the air, right? But look at these photos. That can't be true, can it? The, the helicopter rotor cannot be there to keep the helicopter tail in the air and make sure that it doesn't fall. Can't be. Because the rotor, gasp, I didn't, I can't believe I didn't know this. It's on its side. And if it was to keep the tail up, it would be on the top, wouldn't it? So why is it on the side? Did you draw your helicopter's rotor on the side? I do hope not. I hope I can teach you this because this is so cool. Um, well, it actually comes back to Newton's laws again. It's because um, the helicopter's rotors are spinning in one direction. And this makes the helicopter actually want to spin in the opposite direction. I don't know if you've ever seen a helicopter in trouble, like on a film or something, where it starts to spin. Um, if it didn't have that rotor on the tail, the rotors would go one way and the helicopter would spin the other way. So the rotors on the side to, to generate a force on the side so that if the helicopter wants to spin this way, the rotor sort of forces it to, to stabilise. Isn't that cool? Apparently, I think they're... Um, I think they're connected. Like, I don't think the pilot has to think about this. The big rotor on the top and the side rotor stabilising it um, are kind of in sync with each other. So good. New fact that I just learned for this lesson. Right, uh, you might have heard of the Chinook. A little shout out to Chinook helicopters because they don't have this tail rotor thing. They've got two huge rotors. What can you maybe tell me about these rotors, given what I just told you? The rotors are spinning in opposite directions to keep the helicopter stable, yeah? If they were spinning in the same direction, it would be spinning around. Uh, Chinook helicopters, you might have heard of them because they're very good at ha carrying heavy things. You ready for the big reveal? It's carrying a Land Rover like it was nothing, like it was a packet of sweets. Look at this thing. I mean... I just don't get it. Like, it's so heavy and the blades are so small and it's generating enough lift to get that massive piece of metal and that Land Rover into the sky. I don't know, honestly, I don't know. I think, I think it might be magic. Right, final question before we go. Well, last thing to learn and then I've got a little tiny multiple choice quiz for you. Mars's atmosphere is incredibly thin. There are not many particles hovering above Mars. Its, its atmosphere is 99% thinner than Earth's atmosphere. How would you change the design of an Earth helicopter to get it to fly on Mars? Teacher me is very pleased with this question. You need to think back to that sheet that I gave you about all the different things that affect how much force gets applied to a helicopter, right? What affects how much air is pushing upon the helicopter? Could you... Could you change an Earth helicopter to try and create a bit more lift? I've got two ways. Well, there are two. NASA has two ways. It's not me. <laughs> At least two ways. One of them everyone got on Facebook and one of them a lot of people didn't get. So there's not many particles. How do you make sure that the helicopter is pushing down on enough particles to get into the sky? Have you got two ways? You're going to have to change the helicopter, aren't you? You can't, you can't like cool down the atmosphere of Mars. Here's the helicopter. This is the Ingenuity, which is on Mars as I speak right now in November 2003. 2023, sorry. Um, you'll notice it's got very wide blades. So 
So that's one of the ways to push down on more particles. Uh, note also, it has two sets of blades which spin in opposite directions. You now know why, hopefully. And also those blades are spinning a lot faster. They have to, to generate enough lift for it to go up into the sky. Yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> um, so yeah, it was actually just a, a technology test. This little helicopter Ingenuity went up onto Mars a few years ago just to see if it would fly. And it did fly, it flies really well. It's done, at the time as I speak, um, 66 flights around Mars, which is incredibly useful because before then we could only walk with like a rover. So if you want to explore like in a cave or up on a cliff or down a steep slope, you couldn't do it. But now you can because of little Ingenuity. I know, right, okay. Uh, three multiple choice questions to finish our lesson. Here we go. Question number one. Which of these force diagrams shows the forces on a helicopter as it starts moving up into the sky? Which one of these force diagrams shows the forces that are acting on a helicopter as it starts moving up into the sky? Is it A, uh, with a, a big upwards force and a small downwards force? Is it B, with a big upwards force and no downwards force? Is it C with a small upwards force and a big downwards force? Or is it A and B? Or is it A, B or C, all of them? Six, five, four, three, two. The answer is, I was really hoping I was gonna catch you out. I was hoping that some of you would have written A and B. It's just A. It has to be just A because everything has weight. Everything has weight. Even like on Mars, everything has a weight, right? Mars has gravity, which is pulling things down. So well done if you got that it was A. And if you didn't, I'm kind of pleased because hopefully I've taught you something. Uh, question two. Here you've got a, well, it's a toy Chinook helicopter. But in which direction are these helicopters blades spinning? Is it A, clockwise, B, anti-clockwise, or C, they're each spinning in different directions? Five. Four, three, two, one. The answer is, they're each spinning in different directions to stabilise the helicopter. And finally, how would you adjust a helicopter so it could fly on Mercury, which has no atmosphere? A, you couldn't. B, make the rotors wider. C, make the rotors spin faster. Or D, B and C. So how would you fly a helicopter on Mercury, which has no atmosphere at all? Could you not do it? Would you make the rotors wider? Would you make the rotors spin faster? Or would you have to do both B and C, make the rotors wider and spin faster? Five, four, three, two. Ah, oh, this was horribly mean of me, wasn't it? You couldn't, you just couldn't do that. It doesn't have any atmosphere. There are no air particles. So be, there's no way to get any air particles underneath the blades because there's no particles around you. So yeah, sorry, Mercury, there is no helicopter coming to you soon. All right, uh, that's the end of the lesson. I really enjoyed that one, thank you. It's always nice when we get a whole brand new activity to do and I've had a lot of fun with my helicopter the last few days. I hope you have too. If you want to support me, if you're thinking, wow, these lessons are really good. Lara obviously works tremendously hard, so hard, and I should definitely pay her for the work that she's doing for me. You can, but actually don't support me yet. Support me tomorrow. If you're watching live, um, I'm gonna do a little Black Friday thing and give you something for free, I know. So if you're not supporting me yet, then you should look on my Facebook page and sign up tomorrow because you will get the usual fit of science magazines and rainbow glasses and stuff, uh, but you'll also get one extra thing. So yeah, if you go to my, well, you could just search on, I'm just gonna write it on the board. If you search coffee, that's the website that I use, uh, and Theatre of Science, which is obviously my business name. Search coffee and Theatre of Science, it'll be the first page that comes up on Tinternet. And um, yeah, you could just, it, how it works is everything that I do is free. Home worksheets, uh, for the IGCSE lessons that I do, the printouts that you can get from my uh, Facebook group for this lesson, and all the lessons are totally free, and it only works because most people are chipping in. I really didn't think that you would, but you are, so thank you. Tremendous thanks. <laughs> it's so much better than working in a school. <laughs> so much. I do sometimes worry that one day, what if you all just stop paying me? I would have to go back to a school, and I don't know what I'd do. Like, I don't know if they'd let me back in. It's been quite a long time. So anyway, yeah, much, much appreciated. I'm now going to my Facebook page to see if anyone has left me any comments and said hello. Because every time I'm live, oh, whoa, loads, whoa. <laughs> 
Uh, every time I'm live, I always put a little message on Facebook saying, if you want to say hi, say hi. And uh, there's 34 comments. Could all be from the same person, just giving me answers that has happened before. Let's have a look. Warm air, less lift. Oh, look at all these answers. Warm air, less lift, cold air, more. High up, less lift. Faster, more lift. Wind, no difference. Heavier, no difference. Thinner blades, no difference. Oh, so close. Very nice. Ah, oh, I've just had a message from someone, I won't say your name in case it was uh, supposed to be private, saying I'm nearly at 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. You're going to get a YouTube plaque, am I? Sorry, I think it might have frozen when I pulled the screen down. Someone's just sent me a message saying I'm nearly at 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. And if you get 10,000 subscribers, you get a plaque. I want a plaque, like a proper plaque, not an actual plaque. They don't post you anything to them. They haven't got my address, have they? I'm very excited now. Uh, subscribe, I never say that. Can you subscribe? If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel and let's see if I get a plaque. Hello, Jay and Daisy and Daniel. You are watching again, hello. Hey, Riley and Hallie, hello. Oh, this is nice. Oh, it's Keegan and Caitlin. We received our magazine and rainbow glasses and watched fireworks through the glasses. Oh, that was good timing. Yeah, the rainbow glasses are supposed to be really good. I've never seen fireworks through them. Oh, nice. Thank you so much for signing up, you two. Really appreciate it. Hello, Robin and Hissy. Yay, it's Robin and his pet flammable snake, Hissy. Hissy is a toy. That's not otherwise. If you didn't know that, it's pretty weird. Uh, we were just talking about Chinooks. Robin says they are so vintage, are they? It's vintage, like a cool word the kids are using to mean really good. Uh, hello, Luna. LNF drew a rotor, but they have been watching a lot of the 18 recently. <laughs> Brilliant. There is learning everywhere. Oh, hello, Stanley, and also by Stanley. Oh, good to see you. Hello, Idris and Alwyn and Emrys and Kerwin. Hello, and bye bye. Morning tour. Science day. It's science day for Suki and Alza and Eunice and Musa and Salah. Hi guys. I'll see you. Uh, what I'm going to see you in mm, when? Oh my goodness! In 45 minutes for the lesson that we're doing on airships. I should have said this. If if you're hanging around on YouTube in 45 minutes, I'm going to do a Lego story time show about airships where I'm just talking about what I learned about airships this week and there will be a Lego story time. Bella, my dad is watching as well. <gasps> what? Uh, excuse me, this has never happened before. I mean, maybe it has. As well as my mum, because his new job includes sending out and coordinating search and rescue helicopters. Smiths, I mean, <laughs> bit of a glory support of Bella's dad, no offense. Like, where have you been? Three years, three years Bella's been coming and now it's on helicopters. Uh, you decide you're gonna rock up, hey? <sighs> I, suppose, I, suppose that's, I suppose I should be more positive, Bella. It's really nice that your dad bothered to come to this one. Did he sketch a helicopter? I hope he got that rotor on the right side. There are lives depending on it. Hello, hello Bella Stad, sorry that I feel like that was a bit. Hello Arthur and Abba, <laughs> bit mean. Hello Tiger and Birds, hello Laurie and Flynn. Lots of good force chat here today, not everyone is agreeing. Oh good, lots of people disagreeing. I love it when you disagree. Hello Laura and James, my East Yorkshire massive. All right, Naomi and Josie, watching with their cereal box in hand. Excellent. Hello, Imogen Ophelia. Science day for you. CCCA. CCA. Stanley's on top form. CCA. Is that right? I can't remember. <laughs> Lara, it's not late December. It's, did I say late December? Oh, do you know? Do you remember when I was, I don't know if you came, when I first started teaching in lockdown, there was another lady doing maths lessons and I used to love watching her maths lesson on Facebook because it's just something that happens like it happens when you're a teacher anyway but when you're a teacher and you're just teaching to like mystery people and you're a bit scared just words come out of your mouth that are just wrong and, and watching her and she'd be like blah 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 the moon and she'd mean the sun and she'd say blah 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 20 and she meant 10 and all the kids on the comments being like what are you talking about and he'd be like he, 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 it's not just me so yeah it is late november although if people were watching on catch up they won't be watching this bit and they won't know so it's fine hello edmund he thought there would be more lift in warm air because warm air rises oh that's so good oh isn't that so good oh yeah warm air rises Oh yeah, that is brilliant thinking. I can't even really explain why that's not true. Well, it's not true because it's not the air moving upwards, is it, that generates the lift. It's the helicopter pushing downwards. But that is really good thinking. That is like, as a teacher, that's 
I would prefer that answer to the right answer. That is brilliant. Hello, Grace and Hope. Hello. Late, late December. Maybe I was thinking of that song. Late December in 2023. Right, Luna. Right, Molly. Warm less, cold more. High up less. Faster more. Strong winds more. Heavier less. Thinner blades less. Oh, I thought you'd got 100% there, Luna. You'd be the only person. Right. I'm just going to refresh because some people only find out about this comments thing while I'm doing the shout outs. And then I go and then loads of people on Facebook are like, we're here. Oh, here we go. Tor says birds soar on warm airstreams. This is correct. Next week, we're doing all about gliding. So we'll talk about that next week. We're going to talk about all the animals that don't fly, but still have a go. Like your flying squirrels and whatnot. Oh, hello. Everyone here loved it today. So fun and engaging. Thank you and well worth any and all of the subscription options. Wow. Amber wanted me to tell you we all drew the tail rotor sideways at the start. Oh, Amber. Well, what have you learned today? I hope you've learned something today. Mm -hmm. Why did everyone know this except me? How do helicopters steer? Oh, yeah, good point. Good, very good question. How do they steer? They actually, you would think, wouldn't you, that like helicopter goes that way and that it's maybe got a propeller on, which, I don't know, like a rudder. But actually, one of the things they do is they just point downwards. Um, for very technical physics reasons, I can't, <laughs> I can't quite remember. When they point downwards oh yeah i know actually bella do you actually really want to know this because this is quite interesting for me so in ig in igcse physics lessons we've been doing we've been learning about forces uh can kind of add together so like for example if a force is actually let's do it the right way if a force is pointing that way like not up or down but at a diagonal that means um, that there's actually, what's happened is, there's a little bit of force pointing up and there's a little bit of force pointing to the side. So if you've got a helicopter that is, if all the air is pushing up on a helicopter like this, right? Because the helicopter's pointing downward, so it's pushing, it's just pushing down on the air, so the air is pushing back up again. If the helicopter bends slightly, what happens is it pushes on the air in a diagonal direction so what's happened is it's generated a little bit of force in this direction. So it doesn't matter if you don't get this. It is very much like uh, GCSE physics. But if it's at a diagonal, you get a little bit of force in this direction, which makes the helicopter go forwards. But you've lost a little bit of force. Like, you don't get a force for nothing. So because you've got a bit of a, a cross force now, you've lost some upwards force. So the upwards force is smaller. So when a helicopter goes forwards like that, um, it also has to do something else, like generally just sort of put more power in, right? Like spin the, the blades faster so that it stays as high up in the air. Because if it was just, if it didn't change anything and it just tipped forward, then it would go forward, but it would also go down slightly. You get it? Thanks for letting me say that. Oh yeah, hovering apparently, really difficult. I saw an interview with a NASA scientist who was really cross because everyone thinks like, oh yeah, you just, a helicopter just goes up and then it stays there. He was like, it's so hard. It's so hard getting in that rock solid hover, especially if you're on Mars and it's supposed to be taking photos and stuff and you need it to be really still. It's really difficult uh, balancing these forces perfectly so that it just stays still. I think it's probably easier to do this. Right, I better go. I better go because look, because it's just chaos on my deck. Look at this. This is supposed to be Lego story time. And it's just an absolute mess of nonsense and washi tape. And this is, oh my goodness. Yeah, I need to go. <laughs> so some of you are having science day and I'll see you to learn about airships uh, in 40 minutes right back here on YouTube. I just got a new coffee supporter. Thank you very much if that was you. That is very kind of you. Um, yeah, thank you. I will go and pack some stuff up for you. Okay, I'll see you all soon, folks. Bye, thanks for coming. Uh, Oh, it's Amanda. Hello. Oh, you subscribed. That's really sweet. Wait, and Molly is saying it's an actual plaque. It's not an actual plaque. No. That is so cool. I, I don't. Right, I'm going to make sure that YouTube's got my address and make some space for my plaque. <sighs> okay, right. See you soon, folks. Bye. <laughs>